Today, let us study the words of God under the subject, the day of first fruits, and the hope of resurrection. Human beings had thought that everything would end once they died. They had no hope for resurrection. However, through the resurrection day, God awakens us that there is a way for us to be changed and enjoy eternal life and blessings in the kingdom of heaven with God. Today, I give thanks to Heavenly Father and Mother once again for granting us this blessing. Today is the resurrection day, and it refers to the day of first fruits among the Old Testament feast. Jesus kept the Passover and died on the cross the next day, the day of unleavened bread. And on the third day, which was Sunday after the following Sabbath, he was resurrected. When we look through all this process, we can see that Jesus gave a promise on the Passover, saying, Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life in him. The disciples were greatly joyful in that blessed promise. After that, there was time of Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. How sorrowful it was! On the Passover, joy was given to them. But on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, suffering and affliction followed. After that, they were given the glory of resurrection. Resurrection was truly an amazing message of hope to the early church members and Jesus' disciples in those days. Wherever God's children spread the gospel, they delivered the message about resurrection. People thought that all their things would end once they died. But those who believe in Jesus Christ, believe in Christ An Sang Hong, our Father, and New Jerusalem, Heavenly Mother, in the age of the Holy Spirit, will live even though they die. The message, whoever lives and believes in God, will be changed and led to the eternal kingdom of heaven, spread quickly to all people who were seized by the power of death. Hearing the news about the resurrection of Christ, people came to have hope for resurrection. They had been destined to die, being bound by sins and death. So they would think, Ah, time flies so fast. I've grown old so quickly. After I die, nothing will be left. Human life is so meaningless. But they began to be encouraged. Hearing the news about resurrection and the eternal kingdom of heaven that comes after the resurrection. Wow, this is the essence of our life. Our short life on the earth is not the essential fact of life. It was just a life of strangers on earth. The feast that let us realize this is the resurrection day. We need to know clearly the origin of the Feast of the Resurrection Day and also the reason why Christ had to be raised from the dead on the third day, Sunday. Everything has its own reason. Let us find the reasons from the Day of First Fruits. First, as for the origin of the Day of First Fruits in the Old Testament times, let's take a look at Exodus chapter 14, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pi Haharath, between Migdal and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea, directly opposite Baal Zephan. Pharaoh will think, The Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. 
But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. The Israelites kept the Passover graciously, and the disaster of destroying the firstborn befell the land of Egypt. However, the region of Goshen, where the Israelites kept the Passover, was not punished at all, though it was the same land of Egypt. All the disasters passed over Goshen. After keeping the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, the Israelites departed the land of Egypt on the 15th day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After that, however, the Red Sea blocked them, and Pharaoh's troops chased after them. The king changed his mind and commanded his men to capture the Israelites whom he had let go of. After giving this order, he himself led his troops to get the Israelites back. The Israelites were helpless. The Red Sea was before them and the Egyptian army was behind them. In this desperate situation, God ordered Moses to stretch out his hand with the staff over the Red Sea and divided the sea just like dry ground. The sea water became walls on their right and on their left, and the Israelites crossed the way between the walls of water. The very day when they crossed the Red Sea safely was Sunday. At Sunday dawn, that is, the day after the Sabbath, the Israelites landed from the Red Sea. We can find this history in the Bible. Exodus chapter 15, verse 10. But you blew with your breath, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You stretch out your right hand, and the earth swallowed them. In the end, God brought forth a gracious result of making all the troops of Pharaoh sink in the waters completely. When Moses stretched out his hand with his staff over the Red Sea, the sea was divided and turned into dry ground. When he stretched out his hand again, the divided sea went back to its place and all the Egyptian troops were annihilated. Let's see Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the King James Version says, In the morning watch, let's see the Israelites crossing the Red Sea safely. The Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. 
Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that have followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with the wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Here, the divided water went back to its place at daybreak, and the Egyptians' troops were totally destroyed. On the contrary, the Israelites could cross the Red Sea safely. God performed such gracious works. In order for us to remember this work, God appointed this day as the day of first fruits and commanded us to keep it the day after the Sabbath every year. As we have a service on Sunday today, some may think, why does the Church of God have service on Sunday? Those who don't understand our truth may think so. But today is the day of first fruits, the resurrection day, which has nothing to do with the Sabbath day. God made the resurrection day fall on Sunday every year. Let us confirm the meaning of the resurrection connecting the Old Testament and the New Testament. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 9. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest, bring what? Bring a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. As the first grain was offered, the feast was named the Day of First Fruits. Bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord, so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it, when? On the day after the Sabbath. What day is the day after the Sabbath among the seven days? Sunday. Since the Sabbath is Saturday, the day after Saturday is Sunday. That's why the Day of First Fruits was always celebrated on Sunday. And because Christ became the offering of the Day of First Fruits, He was planned to be resurrected on Sunday. It was already prophesied in the Bible 3,500 years ago that He will be resurrected the day after the Sabbath. It originated from Sunday dawn when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. Crossing the Red Sea at Sunday dawn became the origin. In the ceremony in the Old Testament times, God let the priest bring a sheaf of the first grain on the day after the Sabbath and wave it toward the heavens. Because the priest waved the first grain, it was called the Feast of Wave Offering. And as the priest heaved the offering, it is called the Feast of Heave Offering. And as the first grain was offered to God, it was called the Day of First Fruits too. Although there are different names, they refer to the same feast. It is written, the priest is to wave the first grain on the day after the Sabbath. According to this prophecy, it is written in the New Testament that Jesus Christ became the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep. Let's confirm this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As for the question, why was Jesus resurrected on Sunday, the Bible also gives us the answer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it is written, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. What has he become? The first fruits. Jesus was the first fruits. In the Old Testament feasts, there was the day of the first fruits. He became the offering of the first fruits. The prophecy of the feast was also fulfilled by Jesus. As it is written, the Lord has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. When should the first fruits be offered to God? 
As the offering of the day of the first fruits, he must be offered on Sunday. Then, what happened on Sunday? Let's look at John chapter 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, this is the day after the Sabbath, right? What day is it then? Sunday. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as a burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. When did the resurrection happen? It happened on Sunday, the day after the Sabbath. As it was prophesied, Jesus fulfilled it, right? Let's continue with verse 11. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Through what happened on the day after the Sabbath, Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies of the day of first fruits. Now, let us summarize this briefly. After the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread comes, and then the Resurrection Day follows. The Passover is the Feast of Joy and Life, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Feast of the Passion, Suffering. After the joy of receiving life, the devil, our enemy, inflicted great oppression, persecution, and torture upon Jesus. He demanded sacrifice. However, our God cannot be bound under the power of death. Through the feast of the Day of First Fruits, He rose from the dead and proclaimed toward all mankind that we don't perish by death, but that we can be resurrected and changed. He Himself proclaimed this truth to all mankind. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. We believe that Jesus was resurrected. And so we believe that God will, what? Bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. 
This amazing thing will happen at the moment when Jesus comes to take us to heaven. This message gave hope and joy to the members of the early church. By rising from death, God showed what would happen to us, right? Verse 15. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with the loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. The news of Jesus' resurrection was great, joyful news for all the people who believed in Jesus as they were trembling in fear. So, even in the face of persecution and martyrdom, they thought, although my body temporarily suffers like this and ceases to exist, my soul will go into the presence of God after the resurrection. They always had the hope of the resurrection, and this helped them stand firm in faith. They had faith strong enough to follow Christ in His path of the cross, even willing to die. We can see their firm faith in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, The dead will be brought back to life, and we will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And we will live with the Lord forever in a wonderful world full of new joy and happiness every day. Since their hearts were filled with such a firm faith, they did not waver no matter how severely they were persecuted. But they kept their faith until the end, even though the Roman emperors, who had all the power in the world, threatened them not to believe in Jesus and all the people ridiculed them. In this age, we must not lose our faith in resurrection either. Instead, we should hold fast to the hope that God's people will be resurrected and changed, and that when God comes to take us to be with Him, we will have the glorious moment of meeting the Lord in the air with great joy. In this age, we must have this hope and faith, not losing pride and confidence in our glorious future. We all have the hope of the resurrection. The dead will be raised to life in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, and those who are left still alive will be changed into angels and meet the Lord in the air. We will meet the Lord in the air and live together with the Lord forever in the kingdom of God, leaving all our pain, suffering, and sorrow behind. We will all live such a wonderful life with new joy and happiness God will bring us every day. The Resurrection Day is the day that brought great vitality to the faith of the early Christians who were disheartened and frustrated with all their faith cut off and awakened their pride and joy. On this Resurrection Day, let us renew our faith in the Resurrection and have more hope for heaven. I would like to conclude today's sermon, hoping that you will have a gracious and beautiful feast today. Thank you very much.